Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dee and this is Market Stalkers. Today, I'm doing a review of a prop trading assessment challenge, this time from Earn to Trade. I was really curious to see how it compares to some of the other prop trading challenges out there and to give you a rundown of what's good about it, what's different about it and of course my overall experience with it. I also did a little bit more digging into what happens after you get funded and that's where earn to trade experience actually takes on a whole different level. Let's get started. The company actually started off with uh, the gauntlet, which is a 60 day trading challenge. And honestly, there wasn't that much flexibility in uh, the account sizes. Whereas the mini gauntlet, you get a choice of five different account sizes with very different risk parameters. I went for the 100K gauntlet because the profit target is a little bit lower, so it's a bit easier to achieve. And second of all, I also wanted to take this opportunity to tighten up some of my own behaviors that sort of needed pulling back into the right lane. And yes, you know, I've been trading for many years, but I still use these challenges and uh, metrics to test myself because this is a test. It's a test of skill, it's a test of strategy, a test of your own discipline of trading under pressure with zero risk to your own savings. What's not to like? I want to point out that sometimes I get traders who are reasonably well capitalized from other sources and they say, oh, I don't need funding. I have 100K of disposable income. And that's great. But no matter how great you think you're doing with your own cash, when you're presented with a set of rules to follow and you end up breaking a rule, that does weird things to our little human brain. It kicks off a fight or flight response. And that can ruin accounts quite frequently. But as a trader, you also need to learn how to recognize and navigate through the fight or flight response successfully. That's very difficult. What these types of challenges do for you as a trader is that they bring you into a high pressure environment where if you do break a rule, there will be a consequence. You might have started a mini gauntlet like 10 days ago, but for whatever reason, you go a little bit crazy one day and you break a rule. So now you have to start again. You know, it hurts. <laughs> but until you're able to be a disciplined trader who can stay within the risk parameters and rules that somebody else has set out for you, you really shouldn't be trading your own money. You're just not mature enough as a trader. When you are put in a rule-based situation, but things are not quite going your way, there is always a mental adjustment. Always. There is no escape from it. So even if you are well capitalized, you can still use these challenges as an educational tool to test yourself and see if you can actually stay calm and collected, trading through a drawdown and still trying to stick to all the rules. This is what it looks like when you first uh, go into their dashboard. Uh, most of the rules, they're pretty similar to other similar challenges in the industry. But what sets these guys apart is this maintain consistency rule. One thing I would say that isn't immediately clear is that both of the losses and your wins are uh, taken into account for this consistency metric. And I kind of don't think that that's emphasized enough in this uh, explanation. You know, they kind of mention uh, your total P&L, but then all of the rest of the examples, they only focus on on the profits when you know you've had a big day but let me try and explain what they're trying to achieve with this maintain consistency rule when you have a consistent approach typically you're not supposed to have one massive day and then lots of little kind of wins and losses and then another massive day and then some more little wins and losses instead you'll be pretty consistent with the amounts that you're winning and losing so it's going to be like lose 600 gain 1200 you know gain 800 lose 300 or, you know stuff like that but when you're losing the plot and or just like plain getting lucky what that tends to look like is that all of your profits are basically coming from like one or two large trades that usually spells that you're not quite sure what you're doing as a trader so obviously they don't want people with sort of wishy-washy skills that have those kind of wild swings and luck moments almost kind of accidentally reach a target what they want to see is slow and steady progression towards the target where neither of the days exceeds the 30 percent of the overall profit what does that mean it means that basically they've assigned you not just a daily loss limit 
but also a daily profit target. So once you reach that or, you know, somewhere near that, you need to stop trading for the day. Now, okay, I get where they're coming from, but, you know, as a skilled trader who knows the craft quite well, I think this rule is probably going to be a bit of a hindrance for you because sometimes you will get these uh, great opportunities. You get massively trending days where the market is showing you that it's that kind of a day. And on those days, as a skilled trader, you should be able to recognize that's what's happening and then to take advantage of it, you know. So by them kind of assigning a profit ceiling, I did find it a little bit constricting at times. Having said that, from an educational point of view, the function of these sort of rules and challenges is twofold. One, yes, they're there to potentially, uh, you know, fund traders and, you know, allow you to scale your capital, but they're also there to educate you in discipline and what it actually looks like to be a responsible, consistent trader. So from that perspective, I do agree with this rule. And from what I've seen, once you get funded by them, uh, they do give people quite a lot more freedom once you've built up a basic buffer. So this rule definitely serves a purpose in that respect, and I think it's a good rule. It teaches less experienced traders to stop while they're ahead. And I guess if you have a daily profit target, for example, on this 100K challenge, the profit is 6,000. And that means that no single day should really go over $1,800. That's your daily profit target. But also, uh, like I said, your losses are also counted in there. So if you have a day where you lose more than 1.8K, your consistency rule will go down the drain and then you'll need to keep trading over that 6K target <laughs> so that eventually no single day of profits or losses goes over the 30% rule. So in effect, if you break this rule, you have to prove them that you're capable of coming up with even more profits. Now the progression ladder, uh, this one is pretty similar to other companies, but with learn to trade, you, uh, you have to keep track of these yourself. Uh, they're not going to be like restricting any kind of number of contracts. So if you enter a contract, you know, they will allow it. But when it comes time for them to have a look at the assessment, you're not going to be eligible for funding if you didn't follow this sort of a scaling. So basically, if you want to start um, varying the lot size that you're trading with and increasing it, uh, which is, you know, it's not something I recommend in challenges like this. Uh, but if you do decide to do that, then you'll need to have a look at these guidelines. Now, maximum daily loss limit uh, on this mini gauntlet that I went for uh, is 2.2k per day. That's pretty self-explanatory. No single day should uh, go over 2.2K. I mean, in these sort of challenges, you should really aim to not even be anywhere close to this limit. Uh, and then you have the end of day drawdown. That's basically just maximum drawdown. That's, that's all it is. And uh, it, is, it is a trailing drawdown. So it trails until you reach the starting point of the account balance. So in this one, that's 100K. So once you have a profit of 3.5K, it, it will stop trailing at 100K, right? So that's very good. As some companies in the past have had a trading drawdown that will continue throughout uh, the entire assessment challenge. <laughs> so earn to trade don't have that, and that is actually excellent, much easier. Now, some people might think that, uh, you know, this dashboard is pretty basic, <laughs> but actually it's a bit misleading. If you see here, there's this thing that says journalytics. Journalytics also has its own dashboard. And here you have a whole bunch of statistics that they track automatically for you. So honestly, just for this, the whole getting involved with earn to trade challenge is totally worth it. <laughs> It kind of reminds me of Edgewonk uh, because it, it does have quite a lot of uh, functionalities. You can also do your own playbooks. So for example, here I just kind of created one to, uh, to sort of show you what it is. So basically you can create a playbook and then every time you do a trade, you can actually tag that onto the trade. And I mean, I personally have probably over 30 different setups or so somewhere around there. So obviously I'm not going to be recreating them, them all here, but you know, you could have, for example, value acceptance, and then you could describe how the trade went. You know, it's, it's all very, very useful. Like this is what I used to do back in the day, but I used to do it with like Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> They've made it really easy to see your numbers and what you're doing. So for example, here you have uh, the performance by the hour and you can see that uh, in my statistics, if I execute trades that start after two o'clock rather than after three o'clock, I don't do that well. So that means that uh, 
that I should avoid trading that time of day and instead I should focus on the time of day when I have a clear edge. Now in my case that is 4 p.m. my time, London time. That is how you kind of push your skills forward. It's not just by, oh click, oh shit, it didn't work out. It's, you know, it's about looking at your own stats and then finding your edge, your weaknesses. You can also see which of the instruments I'm doing well on. So yeah, stuff like that, like very, very useful. Now some of the other features as well, you have lessons. They've done quite a lot of work on this with a guy actually talking to you, with David talking to you. <laughs> so if you're a sheer beginner, if you're just starting out, you don't know where to start, um, this is kind of like an all-in-one educational platform. You can use the gauntlet to just kind of practice uh, simulated trades and stuff and it's all going to track your trades but then you get to learn about the basics. Now obviously they're not going to teach you you know stuff like order flow and advanced trading strategy and stuff that comes later. I was a bit uh, surprised when I found this section. <laughs> I've always preferred to watch videos where I have a person actually talking at me. Now I've talked about the parameters and targets and loss limits but let's talk about what happens uh, once you get funded because earn to trade actually differs quite a bit in a good way. Now I've been working on parts of this video for a while. So in the meantime, I actually passed the challenge. So now I can tell you what happens afterwards. You have a choice of going straight onto the live funded account, or you can trade what they call the live SIM account. Now on the live SIM account, if you only trade on one exchange, for example, if you're only trading ES, then the broker will absorb the market data costs. But if you're trading on more than one exchange, for example, I frequently trade equities, but I also trade gold and crude oil, which means NYMEX and COMEX as well. Each additional exchange will carry a cost of additional $105 per month. So think of this as your desk fee. Now, I mean, the desk fees that I used to pay, they went into like $3,000 a month for a Bloomberg terminal, it was crazy. So this is actually pretty low. You're, all you're paying for is just the market data. Now, once you get transferred onto the real funded account, you will have to start paying the market data fees regardless. Uh, but what's absolutely remarkable about the live SIM account is that while you're trading on the live SIM, you can still withdraw the profits you're making on a weekly basis. <laughs> So even though you're not trading the real live account, they still allow you to take profits out based solely on your performance. The profit split is 80% to the trader and then the rest of it is split between the prop company and the broker. When it comes to withdrawal requests, they are actually processed every Tuesday, but you can request a withdrawal on any day of the week. Your payment options are either PayPal or bank transfer. I like to work on a 20% profit payout. And I, t I mean, I typically do it monthly, but obviously with earn to trade you can choose to do it weekly if you wish. But for me, once a month, I take down 20% of profits made. That's kind of a, a number where you can continue to grow the account and have some cash so that it's not all just numbers on the screen. Now the live sim account uh, is actually very quick to set up so you can already start trading on it in like one or two days whereas the actual funded live account it can take up to seven or ten days and that's also pretty standard in the industry all of these things take time uh, there's like some admin to complete and all of that. Now live sim does have a cap you can't just keep trading on it forever. Once you've reached about $5,000 in profit, they will start moving you onto the real funded account automatically. At that point, the broker that they use, I asked because I wanted to know, <laughs> the broker is Advantage Futures. And the prop company you'll actually be working for at that point is Apius Trading. Strangely enough, based right here in London. <laughs> I did not know that. Another thing where earn to trade differs drastically is the potential for pretty serious scaling after you're funded. With most similar remote prop firms, the criticism that I always have is that the scaling up is difficult because there's a daily loss limit. So you're always bound to the shackles of the daily loss limit. But earn to trade, once you've built up the basic buffer, they remove the daily loss limit completely. But obviously with this freedom comes great responsibility. Joking aside though, surviving the buying power increase has to be done wisely. If you're constantly trading larger and larger and larger contracts, at some point you will have a big losing day, 
you will get into a drawdown period for whatever reason. You can have a slowdown in the markets, strategy skid, unexpected events like we had coronavirus last year. And that's the nature of uncertainty environment, which is absolutely fine. You have to be okay with it. Uh, but the way I like to approach scaling is to wait until I've reached a certain target that I set out for myself and then I double the contract. So typically if I started, let's say on a 5k buffer trading one lot size, one contract, only once I've reached $20,000, I will start trading two lots. Once I reach $40,000, I start trading four lots and so on and so on. So with futures trading, you only have full contracts. So scaling up using percentage per trade and compounding like that, it just doesn't work because you can't do 1.3 lots. You can either do one contract or two. There's no in between uh, because in between contracts, it's only something you can do in spot markets with micro and nano contracts. So unless you already have like a six or seven figure account, compounding like that uh, will be very risky because uh, there will be a way too big of a jump in contract sizes. So that's something to keep in mind. So there we go. That was my review of Earn to Trade Assessment Challenge. Overall, with everything that they include as a part of the uh, Earn to Trade experience, one step assessment, journalistics, extra lectures, extra education, and then once you're funded, releasing you from the daily loss limit prison, weekly payouts even while you're on a live sim account. Honestly, I'm very pleasantly surprised to see a remote prop firm effectively giving you the same well, no, actually probably better conditions for scaling up than I had when I was trading in office back in the day. But do let me know your thoughts. Have you tried on to trade? Are you thinking about it? Are you currently in a mini gauntlet? Let me know down in the comments, especially if you're also struggling with any aspect of the challenge, because I might be able to help. Looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.